G'day everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this morning I had some Lincoln students here, uh, about 50 of them. So they, um, I think they were forestry, uh, ag management, um, agribusiness, uh, things like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, took them for a walk up to the airstrip, so those that are watching, yeah, really enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. And, um, and yeah, um, so now I've got, just waiting on Cosmo, Radio New Zealand, he's going to come uh, do our latest kind of spiel, monthly spiel. I think these are going to be two months combined into one, so a uh, wee bit to cover, but yeah, we'll show them the development we're doing, all the upgrades, um, just maintenance time really. So, got the concrete mixer set up over here, and we're going to make some concrete. We've got to expand the concrete base that the um, uh, the new Tapiri um, Lenta Crush is going to sit on. So yeah, we've got to wait for Cosmo to come and then we'll get into some concreting. Got it all boxed up, drilled some holes in the side to um, support the new slab against the old slab. So yeah. Mm. Yep. Uh, the third award was, I think, uh, the um, Water Quality from ECAM Award. So that was, that was recognizing the work that we've done for uh, fencing off waterways, uh, planting natives, so we've, we've a huge amount of reticulated water since we've been here. Um, so just being aware of the impact your farming operation has on local water. Concreting away, got uh, one side nearly done. Have to go make some more. Uh, so what I did was drill some holes into the concrete, just lay these pieces of uh, steel in there, just to try and hold this slab against that slab. Um, got to go around that post up here. But uh, getting that, so one side, one side done. We're gonna make, we're gonna make some more. So we've got our slab done. Uh, mixed up, I think three bucketfuls. Of concrete, um, get out of it, Alfie. <laughs> That'll do for there, for that side, and then I'll show you down here. Down here, we're just going to have to build it up with a block. Get out, Alfie. <laughs> Gosh, with a block of wood like that, something like that, to um, make it level there. But it should work. It'll be good enough for under the crush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So here at the field days, um, yeah, finally got a sunny day here, so I think the first three days, two days were a bit, bit rubbish. A bit cold. Yeah, a bit cold. So here with Corbin from Tapiri, um, we're just going to talk a wee bit about the Lenta Crush uh, that we're going to get, um, hopefully delivered next week, I think. Yeah. What's on the cards? Yep. So do you want to explain a, a few of the real cool features about this, uh, this setup, Corbin? Um, I'll, I'll just do some of the small, well, couple of key features. Obviously at the back you've got some of the um, V-axis doors, um, all with, so it's all kick op operated, that slides in. Um, and then also all the gates have got the two-way slam latch, so you can just pull them straight back out and the latch straight back in. Um, on the model that Alice is getting, it's got squeeze, so just a parallel squeeze here. Um, and probably one of the key things about this is it's got a spring in there, um, so it makes it really light to operate, and then it also um, locks at any point when you bring it in. So, so there we go, right in like that. Yeah, so that'll be really good when we're weighing our calves at weaning, because, you know, calves in a, a small calves in a big a big weigh platform like this, they always tend to turn around and and can be quite frustrating. So, yeah, that'll, yeah really looking forward to using that. Um, another wee feature that you'll note, um, when you pull, like, as the squeeze comes in, um, just for needle access into the neck, um, is this bar here you can now pull out so at the moment it's still got the bolting down the bottom there but we've made it so this is recessed in through here and now you can just get a hand in there um, as the width so if you bring that part way back out um, if this bar is right move you can still get in there with the gun into the neck and yep. behind the head bail there um, and then on the front obviously got the head bail so this is just the C1000 it's our standard head bail um, and it's got the pipe yoke down the front here as well. Yeah. So right, cool. And then we've got built-in EID rails on the side. Correct. Uh, for that one. 
yeah, so that's just what um, this EID gate here is. A, um, it's a, basically turns this gate into a panel reader yeah. um, and on both sides so one gate is the reader and the other gate is like a receiver that bounces it back um, and the benefit of that is that you can still so this it look like this but you can still see through the gate for head bound animal so yeah. when you're standing down the back if you had a bolted on panel reader you can't actually see through and see yeah. where the head is at yeah a lot, lot more uh, less visibility in there yeah and then still got all the access gates on your side yeah, and you've got your, um, so the bottom one where you can chuck a calf in there. You can put, put the calf on there to mother up. Awesome. Really looking forward to getting this all set up and yeah, we're nearly there. Concrete's laid, so um, hopefully next week we can lift it in with a high ab and it'll be a uh, job done. Yep. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming in. Yep. So cool to see it set up. So here with Farm IQ, um, got this ugly bugger sitting there. <laughs> the so pin-up boy. Yeah, the pin-up boy. So that's when they came and did some um, collab with uh, uh, Ansco, with integrating Ansco data into Farm IQ. So that's been around the field days. But um, yeah, got Russell here with us, and he's just going to explain what's new with Farm IQ and what's coming out on the new app uh, that we've got uh, getting developed. Yeah. Kia guys. Uh, so we've got the new app out at the moment which is a lot more user friendly with a very good interface. So to move your mob, you'll just click on the pin, select, click move mob, then select the paddock they're going into. And it's all taken care of. And the next cab off the rank is going to be animal health treatments which is going to be done the same way. Click the pin, click animal health treatment, fill in the simple data and all taken care of. And that's what's coming up in the near future for us at Farm IQ with the new app. Yeah, new upgrades will be uh, will be quite quite exciting going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's um, the feedback's been great. Yeah, oh, cool. We've only had it for about three weeks or so, but yeah, farmers are using it a lot. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Russell. Sweet as mate. Cheers. Cheers. There's a sheep in there. What do we got here, Gina? Oh, trying on I, some new clothes. I'm taken aback and shocked by the instant <laughs> videoing. I have this a very feel appeal um, pink Reno top on. I'm just deciding the colour, the style, the size. I just, so many decisions other than the fact that I want one. This is not an impulse purchase either, so this is... To be fair, it's not an impulse purchase because we started talking about it on Wednesday night. Yeah. Yes. So. Absolutely. It's a very considered decision. So this is Siobhan from Hemprino. Hi. So tell us a bit about Hemprino. Uh, so Hemprino is a blend of Merino and hemp fibre. So Merino wool and hemp fibre. So the hemp fibre makes the Merino a little bit more durable, um, but also softer. So over time, as you wear it and wash it more, softer and softer. We're a brand that's founded by three farmers. So um, a sheep and beef, a Merino grower, and I'm a dairy farmer from the West Coast. So we just sort of got into the fashion business by accident. But yeah, um, yeah we love it. Oh, nice. And where can we find you? Um, where can't you find us, on, Online? <laughs> yeah. You can find Hemprino on um, Instagram, NZ Hemprino, or LinkedIn, or Facebook, or just hemprino.co.nz. There you go. I think Forward. we may even be on the TikTok. Ooh, could even be TikTok. TikTok. Right, it's not me, though, obviously. I'm not, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know anything about TikTok. What do you found, Jenna? Well, I'm just trying the different sizes, you see, because yeah. they're all gender sizing. <laughs> not sure which one I am. The size I mean. <laughs> so which size you are, that's right. So it means you can try them. And generally women size up a bit and tip it outside. Right. Well So we'll, we'll see I what we come like out with. New chunky knit one. Which is over there, Alistair. Oh. What chunky knit one? Oh, over there. Chunky knit scarves. Oh yeah, scarves and beanies. <laughs> Morning everyone, so Kiwi show yesterday, um, yeah caught up with a few people, it was pretty cool, uh, had a catch up with, oh you've you seen, uh, Tipari and Farm IQ and then Siobhan, good friends of ours doing Hemperino, so that's pretty, yeah it's nice to catch up with them. So today is Oxford A&P show, so um, we've got yeah local A&P show here, so uh, my brother-in-law is actually president, so yeah the kids have got some entries in and um, uh, I don't know whether Jenna's got anything in or not, but I thought we'd take the old girl down there. So, Farm will be. Um, haven't really shown this on the channel much. 
it's been sitting in the shed. It's a 1945 uh, Farmer B. So this tractor, I've got a bit of footage um, that I might do a whole video on later when we picked it up, but Dad explains the history of it. But in a nutshell, um, this was on the farm where I grew up, Namanoa 2. Uh, it was on the farm when my grandfather purchased it, 1973. Ah, uh, yeah, so always been on the farm, was brought brand new. My mum used to drive this tedding hay. Um, I have never seen it run, other than it was the first time I ever saw it run was when we picked it up from Dad's place. He's the one that's been restoring this. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to drive this, and uh, there's a fair bit of family history in here, so um, we're going to take it down to the show, and, yeah, enjoy it, really. So we'll get the, get the girl fired up and uh, take it down the road. Still haven't got a muffler for it. It's one thing I kind of neglected to do before this, but uh, she's a bit loud. So, got the earmuffs on, and we'll, uh, we'll go down the road. It's only about 4Ks or something, so pretty cool. We'll, uh, we'll be there soon. Just on the day that it's very little bit painted, but this is the way I have gone. Um, but the Hereford cow, this is a beautiful day here now. See how the rain's gone through, but we'll go and check out some sheep. Got the old tractor over there with the other girls. So we don't have any sheep in here, but we've got, uh, some of the family do, so we'll go and check out some milk and sheep, but... Yeah, we've been hit up a couple of times, why do we, why we don't have fleeces in the, in the show, and sheep in the show, and it oh, <laughs> kind of runs away on us, and just, yeah, I only think about the show when it's quite close, so... Thank you. 
Having a bit of a yeah, a couple of drinks this show, and uh, mate borrowed my tractor with a trailer, and here's he's coming down the road. Gave me a call, said uh, front drive shaft is buggered, so, so I don't know actually what it's done. We'll climb under here and have a bit of a look. It's uh, done something to the front drive shaft and the uh, oh yep. See the oil leaking out of here. Well, that's lovely. It sheared it off under there somewhere. Oh, we'll, we'll take this cover off and uh, see what we can come up with. We'll have to disconnect the front drive shaft and see if we can get this home. Bugger. So we've got the drive shaft cover off and this is the piece that is meant to be connected to the front diff. So as you can see, uh, it's been broken for a while and then finally just let go so just r and it's uh what are we nearly 8,000 hours on this tractor so it's done well I was starting to wonder when it was going to start costing me money so oh well I think um, we can limp it home and um, I'll just get Jenna to run me back for my ute but um yeah shit happens that's what happens when you have machinery so we'll send Scott on his way with the trailer and uh yeah no drama so now we're in the daylight, next day I thought I'd just give you a bit of quick uh, look at what uh, actually happened on this tractor last night. So we'll climb under here. And snap the, snap the spline off the front drive shaft. Um, yeah, hopefully no other damage, there's a bit of an oil leak there, but I think that's, that's just, um, one of the fittings got pulled. So hopefully that's just a case of 
pulling that off and re-threading it and yeah hopefully that won't be too bad and then we'll bring you over here and this is the piece that fell off uh, it's very expensive paperweight now so you can see it's been broken for a while and then it just let go yesterday so drive shaft looks okay um yeah don't know how we'll talk to the mechanic tomorrow but oh well this thing, these things happen. Right, see you later.